Hi, this feels very intimate, a slightly different corner of my space. Today we're talking about Almond by um, Son Wonpyung, uh, but I guess Wonpyung Son, that's a South Korean author. This book is very popular because it was um, recommended by BTS's RM. I'm a big, big, big BTS fan, ARMY, and I first saw this book when both um, RM and Sugar were reading it during the In the Soup, the first In the Soup, and um, I did read a couple of RM's recommendations and I really loved it, but I guess this is one of the ones that I hadn't heard about. I felt like it was more like young adult. I don't know who said that. Um, and then finally I picked it up and when I read it, I was like, okay, I see why people think this is young adult, but I also feel like it's something that anyone would enjoy no matter kind of like what age group you're in so let's talk about the author herself apparently this was her debut novel but she has some um, experience in like screenwriting i believe i don't really read many books that are like this linear a lot of them are like reflective philosophical but this is very much like pure story Telling. so it's a little bit different for me but I, I still really enjoyed it I do think there has been some criticism about the pacing I personally actually breeze through this I am not someone who is like I can read any book I'm not like I actually do struggle um, in finishing a lot of books so for this one I didn't have that problem I think it's a pretty easy read so almond what is uh the kind of meaning of the name i guess um the book goes on to talk about this the protagonist is this young boy who uh, i have this written because i'm not gonna say it right otherwise alexithemia alexithemia which is basically a condition, a brain condition, which impairs his ability to experience emotions. And it's not just about kind of exp by experiencing emotions. I don't mean it's um, his like ability to just express, but his also ability to comprehend emotions and think about emotions in the way other people think about it. So it's a lot more complicated than just like, oh, he doesn't feel anything. The story itself begins incredibly heartwarming. So you learn that like from a really young age, uh, Yunjae's mother kind of had this feeling that her son, like some things were not really, um, I wouldn't say normal, but like not what she was expecting. So she read up on it that children are supposed to smile from like day three, but it had been like a hundred days and like Yunjae still hadn't smiled. And then it was like, really stressing her out so she would take him to the doctor who would just say like there's nothing wrong with him but you know she always had this feeling that you know something was not quite i don't hate to say normal but like you know what i mean um and then the first time i guess we're at the very beginning of the book you are introduced to these two very traumatic things that happen in yunjae's life the first thing involves like bullying and um assault towards like a minor and the second thing is basically like a manic murder spree both of them resulting in death very close to him that's why i have a feeling that i wouldn't really categorize this as young adult because i feel like there's loads of themes here that even though it's the story of like i do feel like it's a coming of age story but there's a lot more depth to what is being explained in fact i would say this is a great book for kind of new parents or people who are trying to navigate parenting. You learn that Yunjae's mother didn't have the best, not the best, the most easy of childhoods herself. His grandmother brought her up on her own and she wanted the best for her daughter. Um, she wanted her to really do well. So she would sell like rice cakes in the um, market and she wanted her to have an accomplished life but then you and Jay's mother fell in love with this um street vendor which his grandmother found incredibly like you know like how can you do this to me kind of a thing but in despite that uh, his mother went on to have a baby with um said dad but when Yunjae was really young or even before he was born, um, his dad actually passed away because he was involved in an accident where someone kind of drove into his booth. And after that, Yunjae's mother really struggled to bring him up on, his, on her own because, you know, like, of course, there's struggles of being a single mother, but also on top of that, there were loads of points where she felt like she couldn't give Yunjae all the love and attention that he needed. Um, especially after the first thing that happens where he sees a young kind of, child being abused um and after that he doesn't really show the proper emotions so she's really worried about him so she gets in touch with uh, her own mother and things happen and eventually Yunjae ends up living with his mom and his grandma and although the world kind of 
tries to portray him like a monster who doesn't really feel much his mom and his grandmother at least act like they're pretty unfazed by all of this they really support him they do everything to like protect him and his mom like puts these little sticky notes everywhere like learn to smile when people do this you should like do this just like her dream was so that her child blends in and i feel like this is where i realized the story is so like it is so intertwined with like korean culture and present day korea more than it is to do with coming of age because uh korean society at least south korean society is known to be incredibly conformist it's why the whole idol scene really works it's why a lot of things are the way they are even the way korean people dress um now it's incredibly conformist there's very little individual identity in the society so kids being very different or having a very individual identity especially things like you know mental illnesses etc aren't looked on very favorably and a lot of the times the mo the biggest thing parents want is for their child to blend in and do well or do the same things but like just better than everyone else whereas you know western societies might cherish or um, support individualism more individuality it's not the case so growing up in this kind of a culture with set mental illnesses is more of a struggle and i feel like that's the main point that the author is trying to get across from the book apart from the other things and i feel like this whole concept of yunji being so different is almost like a I guess this extreme example of like even how you know like the smallest of differences can lead you to have such a difficult life little spoiler here um in this point where like in the middle of the book um yunji ends up losing his grandmother and mother to a manic killer on the streets and the only reason like this killer has a really interest, interesting backstory where he's basically rejected by society and when in the beginning Yunji says this is a story about a monster meeting a monster i thought oh maybe he gets to know this killer who killed his family but that's not the case i think this book just gives us a ton of very i guess unconventional characters conventionally problematic characters that actually say a lot about society than just themselves because this man was basically lost his family, lost his job, lost everything and just came out like he basically retreated and then came out one day just on a killing spree and said I would kill anyone with a smile on their face because how dare the world be happy and move on without me when I'm literally unable to be happy and he comes and and the only reason Yunjae survives is because he actually doesn't have the capability or like the natural uh, desire to like smile so even if he was with his family having a good day out and about on christmas day he wasn't smiling because that's just not how he is and that's why he survives which is such like uh, that that part really got me but moving on after that he kind of retreats because obviously yunji had a lot of support from his mom and his grandmother in trying to live a normal life and he was somewhat being able to actually achieve that and succeed at it till the point he lost them and he didn't really know what to do he'd retreated into his shell and this is where i felt like it was so movie like because this guy comes into his life and he's like oh you need to do me this little favor and i'll pay you and i'll help you out in exchange for it and things happen and somehow is introduced to this character called gone gone and gone is basically like this other tr teen troubled teenager and they meet and they start forming this relationship which is incredibly problematic in the first place and from there you get to learn how two very complex individuals very different start coming into each other's life and completely changing it and in a way it helps him come out of his shelf he learns all of the nuances of how important it is to be very empathetic in a relationship to be understanding of each other to be accepting of each other and you learn a lot about just i guess male friendships coming of age how it is to be so different in society and then to find comfort in someone who also is to a large extent you know not accepted in the society so there's a lot of like little themes built into the story and despite it being um, primarily about a guy who's struggling to i guess be a part of society it is as much of a story about society also having an issue with people who don't fit its demands and then has this tendency to almost label people before even trying to understand them which it's not a like everybody needs to put their individual effort into it but i think something like this a piece of literature like this especially taught to young children can teach them a lot about how if you want people to accept you you need to first 
learn to be accepting of other people. Although it is a critique on society and their treatment towards these people, the book also does a really good job of presenting a very complex set of characters that give you many different perspectives on this. Uh, one of the really good examples is Mr. Shim, I think, who is someone who lives in the same building where um, Yunji and his family used to live. And after his parents his grandma and his mom pass away he becomes this really important character someone who actually gives him the space and gives him the opportunity to kind of like find his own feet is not overbearing but also incredibly understanding and finds his own very subtle ways of trying to help him out and the subtlety of these relationships and the way the yeah, these adults are kind of trying to help him is really telling of how like if you have the right people in your life it doesn't really matter what are the circumstances that you're born into you can really progress from it this is something that mr shim is telling you and uh, my advice to you is that you should remember that the brain grows the more you use it the better it becomes if you use it for bad you'll grow a bad brain but if you use it for good you'll have a good brain i heard certain parts of your brain are weak but if you practice you could make them stronger in a way it felt like the author was trying to like just put a letter out to society that if we all learn to show a little bit more empathy and become a little bit more empathetic and understanding of other people's situations, we also will have a much easier time integrating and living with other people in society. I need to go back and read you the note from the beginning of the book. Um, there has been some studies that um, show that there is the ability of the amygdala to process fear and anxiety it can be increased through training. So the whole book just says that with the right kind of, I guess it is nature versus nurture in a way, where it says that nurture can help us overcome a lot of the things that we feel like inevitably are a part of our personality and you do see that growth. But I guess she does take the creative liberty to actually explore those themes and concepts, whereas it might not always be the case. I think in general, the book is such a great um, piece of literature when it comes to like just simple um, concepts of communication, young friendships, male friendships, um, the importance of empathy in relationships, a lot about just general understanding of human emotions and the complexity and also to a large extent being accepting in friendships. If we think about this as like, okay, two people in their early 20s who are both struggling and not understanding like I know that in this book it's like extreme cases represented but this type of dynamic can apply to a lot of people and I know it applies to like many friendships that I have experienced in the past so there's something that we can all take into it I would my recommendation would be not to read this book at face value and actually be able to apply the situation to many situations in your own life and I feel like the reading experience will then be a lot more I guess fruitful um, but yeah, that's my review of the book. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you do read it, let me know. I mostly review Southeast Asian, East Asian books on this channel at the moment. Um, but yeah, if you have any recommendations in that genre, then let me know and I'll see you guys later.